Let's look at why situation factors are important when choosing the location of a factory. Situation simply means transporting materials to and from a, a factory. No, it does not mean the washed up guy from Jersey Shore. I hope you all get that reference. I hope it hasn't been too many years. Uh, so first we need to know about inputs. Inputs are anything used to make a product. That could be raw materials, it could be energy, it could be machinery, it could be support services. Anything that goes into the manufacturing of a finished product is an input. And whenever companies have to transport things further distances, the cost usually rises. So companies, their main objective is to cut down cost and transportation wherever they can. So now let's look at some industries where being close to the input is really important. And we're going to call this proximity to inputs because uh, the, the factory needs to be located near the inputs. Uh, this is what we call a bulk reducing industry. Bulk reducing industries almost always locate their factories near the inputs because in a bulk reducing industry, uh, the input weight, your raw materials, weigh more than the final product. And the factories in these industries are closer to the inputs in order to save transportation money. Uh, an example of this, two examples here, are the copper and steel industries. Uh, when you refine copper and when you create steel, uh, the final product always weighs less than the original metal. Uh, for example, with copper, the copper ore, especially that's mined in the United States, is only about 6% actual copper. So you have 94% junk that really can't be used in the final product of copper. And so uh, it has to be refined and, and, and melted down and you know chemicals have to be added to it. And so uh, the, the copper is very heavy when it's mined. So they put the factory or the mill closer to the input, which is the mine, uh, and then here you have the market. So when it's transported, the final product from here to the market, it is much cheaper simply because the product uh, is lighter. <clears throat> now, next, uh, we have, we're going to look at three industries where being close to the market is very important. Uh, here we have proximity to markets. The first kind of industry is what we call bulk gaining industries which are obviously the exact opposite of bulk reducing industries. In a bulk gaining industry, your final product weighs more than the input. Uh, so weight is gained in manufacturing. Uh, the factories have to be near the market because, again, they want to transport the heavy stuff the least distance possible. And that works out for the companies because they have to pay less, and it works out for the consumer because uh, obviously those additional costs will be passed on to the person that buys the product. So it's in everyone's best interest to locate the bulk gaining industries near the market. The two examples uh, that are really easy to understand are cars and sodas or any kind of bottled beverage. Uh, for cars, the inputs for cars, final finished product cars, are parts like engines, uh, tires, seat belts, seats. Uh, you know, any, uh, and so all these little parts or big parts, they weigh less than the final finished car. So because of that, car factories are located near the market. Uh, so that's, that's why you see on maps, like there's this big, the, the middle of the country is where most of our uh, car parts manufacturers are, and that's where our, a lot of our car factories are, simply because it's, they're closer to the markets that way. The other example here is sodas. Uh, any kind of bottled beverage, whether it's bottled water, bottled soda, bottled beer, uh, all of those things, uh, weight is added during the manufacturing process. And so uh, the, these separate bottles and the water uh, and, and the ingredients for these drinks uh, individually weigh less than the final product. So uh, obviously it's pretty logical when you fill up a bottle with soda or water or anything, any kind of liquid, it's heavier than an empty bottle. So these factories are located near the market. Uh, our second industry 
that's located close to the market are called single market manufacturers. And these are companies or factories that really only have one or two major customers. Uh, the big example here uh, would be seats in cars, like the big you know, bucket or bench seats that you sit in. Uh, and they are located near the market because these products have to be delivered very quickly. Uh, car factories don't want a bunch of bulky, heavy seats sitting around in their factory not being used. And so what the car companies do is they order, when they know they have to make 100 cars, they'll order 100 sets of seats. And those seats have to be delivered right before the, the car is manufactured. Uh, this concept is called just-in-time delivery. It basically means that, that you have to be able to ship something to the factory an hour or two before it's used because the car companies realized long ago that keeping lots of unused parts in a warehouse is not very efficient. It's very expensive to do that. Uh, so again, single mar market manufacturers only have one or two major customers and their products have to be delivered very quickly. Now, you may be asking yourself or talking to your screen right now and saying, Mr. Martin, what about eggs? What about milk? What about bread? I'm certainly glad you asked me that. Because we're going to look at our third type of industry where being very close to the market is important. And that's called perishables. The word perishable, obviously the root word is perish, which means to go bad. Uh, so perishables go bad quickly. They're near the market simply because people, people have to have these things quickly again uh, before they go bad. The two main examples here are food because food spoils. Nobody wants rotten eggs, nobody wants rotten milk, nobody wants stale or moldy bread. Uh, so they have to be located near the markets so that the, the food doesn't spoil quickly. The other big example here are newspapers because newspapers information is dated. Uh, a newspaper loses its value after the day it's printed. So. Uh, obviously people don't want to read news from the day before. So newspaper printing facilities are always near the market where they're sold. Uh, and here we have some nice examples of milk, eggs, and a newspaper. Finally, let's look at shipping methods. And what is the best shipping method for certain products? And this is called ship, rail, truck, or air. When you ship something by a truck, you're usually sending it a, a short distance, maybe between states. Sometimes it's across the country, but usually uh, trucks are used for short distances. Uh, so there's short distances and medium cost. Uh, so obviously there's things that go into truck shipping, like the unloading and unloading and all of that. Uh, so companies usually use trucks for shorter or medium distances because the cost isn't very high. Uh, railroads are used for usually very long distances. Uh, we're talking across the country or you know long distances between states uh, because the trains don't have to stop like trucks do. 18-wheelers uh, by law have to take rest breaks. Railroads don't have to do that. Uh, and, and plus railroads are more efficient energy wise. They use much less energy to go the same amount of distance as a truck. Uh, so they're low cost and very high distance. Uh, ships are used for very long distances, like between continents or between oceans, uh, and and those that shipping method is very low cost because of uh, the shipping container. It's one of the most revolutionary things in our economy. The things you see on the back of 18 wheelers, those big metal boxes, they're basically stacked like blocks on top of each other and put on these huge container ships. And so the invention of the shipping container was just hugely revolutionary in the global economy. That's why uh, China can send many of its products to the U.S. very cheaply because they just throw them all in these huge shipping containers, put them on ships, and send them over to wherever they're going. Uh, finally, the last uh, and most expensive method is by air. Air travel is extremely expensive uh, for products, and so a lot of times uh, it's, it's used for long distances and very quick transport. Uh, if, you, if you need something delivered immediately uh, you, or, or within the next, within 24 hours, you usually opt to ship it by air. Uh, so that's why when you buy something online and it says one day shipping or you know, air shipping, that's the most expensive kind. Uh, and there's a word that you need to know when it comes to shipping and that is break of bulk, a break of bulk point. 
A break of bulk point or a break of bulk center as it may sometimes be called is an area simply where products are moved from one type of transport to another. An example that I've drawn here very nicely as you can see is a ship going into a port uh, and then a truck at that port would offload the shipping containers onto the truck. Then the truck may drive somewhere else and then they at a rail port uh, and they will offload their container onto a train and then the train would take it either to uh, another trucking yard or maybe to another port so it's a very important term you need to know is break a bulk center simply where methods of shipping are changed over